Hello everybody and welcome back to Oxygen Included. Very quick and very quiet video because my girlfriend is sleeping in the other room. Um, I got a question asking what it would look like to do the regolith melter build but with uh, glass as opposed to uh, magma, uh, which is one of the options that I listed in the previous video, and what would it look like to be doing that in survival, right? What would be, you know, the sort of the process you would go through to build that in survival? And the big advantage of using molten glass as your heat source is that you can then uh, put this build anywhere. You're not constrained by wherever there is a volcano or you know having this built at the bottom of your map. You could put this anywhere. And that might also be useful because there are other ways that you can use a facility like this. Uh, it isn't just a facility for melting regolith and turning it into igneous rock. You could also be molting, melting down uh, rust and turning it into iron. Um, you could be melting down any sort of ore and turning it into its refined metal. Um, and with a little bit of uh, retinkering, you could actually use this to turn clay into ceramic or turn uh, coal into refined carbon and, and things of that sort. So there are other uses for this build as well. Um, but the basic idea is going to be that we are going to replace this magma source, which we're using as our heat source for our heating element up here. We're going to replace this magma source with molten glass, right? Molten glass is the other sort of easy access material that we have uh, that we can get up to these temperatures. There are tricks that you can do with um, metal refineries to really heat up something. Um, but I think this is the simplest, just using molten glass as opposed to magma as an alternative. So I, I got asked the question, what would it look like to do that in survival? So I've gone ahead and uh, kind of made two quick little slides here, more or less. Um, the first step that I would do is I'd build myself a chamber, uh, probably double tiled ceramic. Uh, I wouldn't really want to spend insulation on the build. I used insulation just for demonstration purposes down here, but double tiled ceramic is probably the way to go in survival. Um, if you are better at creating sort of vacuumed out areas than uh, just having a layer of ceramic and then a vacuum and then another layer of ceramic would also work really well. It would work better. Um, it would cost you a little bit more in materials, but that isn't really that big of a, big of a concern. Um, and then I would have some sort of conductive material up here, right? And I would build this snaking obsidian pipe uh, in this room, which ultimately empties out down here. Um, and then I would build a input pipe right here. So going to the, uh, the plumbing overlay, right? I have a pre-built obsidian pipe down here and then a pipe down here. I also include some temp shift plates. I've made these out of tungsten. Tungsten is probably my material of choice given that tungsten is now sort of a renewable resource in the game. Uh, there are space destinations where you can retrieve more tungsten. I'm a little bit more comfortable using tungsten in builds, um, but diamond or steel both work perfectly fine for this. Um, and the reason I make these out of obsidian pipes is because we're going to be putting molten glass through here. And one of the uh, one of the ways of preventing the molten glass from solidifying in your pipes is to just use a pipe material that has a very low specific heat capacity. And so it's very thermally reactive. It, it changes to the temperature of the glass very quickly. Basically, the idea is to have a hot pipe and not worry about insulating that pipe because we're going to have this pipe be going through either insulation or um, uh, going through uh, you know vacuum and uh, basically just have the pipe be hot. That way the glass doesn't cool down as it's going through it and use that as our process for uh, preventing the glass from solidifying in the pipes. Um, obsidian is also a lot cheaper than using something like tungsten. Uh, if you have access to more tungsten, sure, use more tungsten, right? Tungsten has an even lower specific heat capacity and is more thermally reactive, which is kind of what we're going for, at least in this internal part right here. Um, but obsidian should work fine in this build. So I'd build out this room first, a vacuumed out area, uh, some temp shift plates, uh, some mat conductive material up here that has a sufficiently high melting point that I don't have to worry about that. Um, and then I would hook up a glass forge and this glass forge I would start running and filling up this room with molten glass. Now this is going to be a lot of operations because each operation of this glass forge is going to consume 100 kilograms of sand but it's only going to produce 25 kilograms of molten glass um, and per tile you're going to have molten glass fill up uh, 1,820 kilograms per tile so this is a lot of operations. Every single tile in this room right is going to be four times 18 plus one, roughly, um, number of operations that you're gonna to have to do with this glass forge to fill it up. Um, but this is how you're going to kind of man make your heat source. And the nice thing is that we have plentiful access to sand, which is all that we really need here, right? Sand and power is, is all we need to make glass, but this is going to get us a nice hot room of molten glass. Now here I've let this kind of reach thermal equilibrium for a while, but basically the next step is I would then uh, expand out my walls a little bit more and I would build a heating element and then I would connect that heating element up 
I'd have a thermal sensor, do all my automation, put some doors down here. I might not use like this door structure just because this is seven doors when three doors can do pretty much the same job. In any case, um, you know, if you want to have seven doors, you can do seven doors too. But uh, the basic gist of this is we're going to then start having our molten glass heat up uh, this area right here, right? It's going to start turning our heating element on. We're not going to turn our system on at this point, but we're going to have our heating element start to warm up. Um, and we're going to try and get this nice and really hot because we're going to want to get it really hot that way when the regolith comes down because the first batch of regolith we process is only going to be 300 degrees. So there's not going to be any counter flow in our heat exchanger with the igneous rock. We're going to want this to be really, really hot. That way it will still be able to melt the regolith that comes in. I've used a mishmash of materials here. You can use obsidian in your temp shift plates. That's fine. I think really the only critical temp shift plates here are these four that are connecting um, our heating you know, our heat source to our heating element, right? Those are going to be the really big ones, these four right here. So I'd make these out of like diamond, tungsten, steel, something along those lines. But you can have diamond in this build, you can have steel in this build, again, whatever materials are fine. Um, but yeah, and then we just start heating this up. And the next step that we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the pipe that fed into here, right? We're going to disconnect that pipe and reroute it to here. So this pipe should be nice and hot now because it's been having a bunch of molten glass go through it. We're not going to have to worry about glass uh, solidifying when, as it goes through this pipe, ideally, right? Um, and we are then going to pump molten glass through here, and we're going to start heating up this system. So we have this thermal sensor in here. This thermal sensor is going to allow this glass forge to turn on. Uh, we're just going to have this glass forge set to you know infinite molten, molten glass orders. Um, so whenever this turns on, some duplicate will come by and start operating this thing. And the idea is that uh, the, this fresh molten glass that we're sending through, this molten glass is going to be produced at a temperature of 2,000 degrees Kelvin. Uh, in Celsius, that's uh, 1727, right? Roughly speaking, right? 273 degrees difference between uh, Kelvin and Celsius. In any case, uh, if this temperature drops sufficiently low, right, to the point where we're worried about uh, this room kind of freezing up, or more importantly, the, the fresh molten glass that we had sent through here, breaking our pipes because this room was allowed to go sufficiently cold. Um, if that happens, you know, we, we need to be basically be running this glass forge to reheat this room, get this temperature back up. Um, and we're going to have probably even more than one glass forge. It's probably going to be just a row of glass forges all feeding in through this one pipe. Um, that are supplying both the molten glass that comes in here because we're going to need a lot of it and the reheating operations because we're going to be ultimately processing a lot of igneous rock through our system here. So we're going to want a lot of uh, stuff here to pound it into sand and then turn it into glass. We also want to have some idea at this point of what we're going to be doing with that molten glass. So here I'm just depositing it into some basin down here, but this basin presumably should be hooked up to, you know, uh, some sort of system of steam turbines to generate power and so on and so forth. But uh, in any case, that's the, the general gist here. We're going to um, start our system up cold here. We're going to start filling it up with molten glass, get it all nice and hot. Uh, as this uh, molten glass starts cooling down because it's heating up this uh, element. And here I've just, I literally just spawned a bunch of molten glass at the temperature that it would be produced at in this room. We see the molten glass is down to around 1470. Right, and uh, we've gotten the very ends of these heating elements up to 980, roughly speaking. Um, so we still have a little bit of ways to go. Uh, I think if you filled this room entirely with molten glass, basically with at least these dimensions that I've used, you'd actually be fine. This room would never solidify, and you'd be you wouldn't be in any sort of rush to start reheating it, right? Because you wouldn't have to worry about molten glass somehow as it goes through these pipes solidifying and then breaking the pipes in this closed system that you don't have access to anymore. Uh, but in any case, that's how I would go about this in survival if I was using the the glass, uh, the molten glass version of this, and everything else would just be the same, right? The um, the sort of the the cooling pad that we have over here, um, all of our stuff over here, the heat exchanger system that we're using, all that would be you know just the same. The only thing that we're replacing in the system is uh, replacing this magma source with a molten glass source, right? Um, and that's basically how I'd go about things in survival. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Again, you can use builds like this, not just for melting regolith, although the big advantage of melting regolith in this uh, format is that you generate a lot of excess heat, which can be used to power your base. Uh, but you could take something like rust and turn it into iron, which is a pretty good suggestion. Um, because those two have the same specific heat capacity, you wouldn't be generating any excess heat, but you would be getting 
you know, refined metals out of rust, which is pretty cool. Um, lots of little things like that you can do with builds like these. Uh, and this is sort of the way that you can place this anywhere, right? You can place this uh, not just at the bottom of the map and not just around a volcano, but anywhere that you're comfortable kind of just setting aside as a glass production area and having some sort of heat exchanger nearby and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's it for this video. Um, hope this answered the question. Hope this helps with uh, your builds. Again, vacuum out a room, uh, insulate a tile around it with conductive tile on top, put in your piping, put in your temp shift plates, put in basically all the connections that you're gonna need, and then start filling it with molten glass. Uh, once the molten glass has filled the room, uh, you're, you can connect up the rest of your heating element, build that out, and then uh, as this room starts to cool down because it's heating up, it's transferring its heat to this heating element, you then reheat using the pipes that you built before. You don't have to worry about molten glass solidifying in these pipes because this room is very hot and these pipes are very hot now, right? So you don't have to worry at all about that. And uh, there you have it. That's basically how I would go about things, setting up a glass, molten glass version of this build in a survival mode game. And uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. Very quick, very short. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time.